On May 2nd, NASA picked SpaceX as the one of the mission providers for lunar landing project, together with the main competitor Blue Origin. For that means, SpaceX revealed Starship SE, special edition version with the all-new design for the mission to the moon. It will have no flaps or heat shielding needed for Earth returning. The core thing of the all-new design is landing leg system. Here is what Elon Musk said to explain lunar landing project. The thing that concerns me most right now is that unless we improve our rate of innovation dramatically, then there is no chance of a base on the moon or a city on Mars. I mean, technically, we could send people around the moon on Dragon, but I'm not sure we'd want to. Um, it's too, too small. But there's really just one thing that matters that is a fully and rapidly reusable rocket. Uh, that That's the one thing that matters. That's why we have a big focus in terms of new technology development on Starship. And Starship needs to be fully and completely reusable, but that's, that's crucial for getting to, to Mars. The, the moon is neither here nor there. We, we were <coughs> going to make it out of advanced composites, and the advanced composites that cost like $60 a pound, or oh, $60 a kilogram, like a little more than that, maybe $130 a pound. And there were 60 to 120 plies f for the, the tank. It was taking forever. We weren't making good progress. Uh, cost crazy money. And I was like, okay, you know what's easy to weld? Steel. Steel is really easy to weld. Steel, especially 301 full hard steel, couldn't be that heavy because uh, the original Atlas had a very good mass fraction. Essentially, we want to make our current vehicles redundant. Uh, we want to have one system, one, one, one booster and ship that replaces Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon. All the resources that are used for Falcon 9 Heavy and Dragon can be applied to this system. That's actually extremely important for making a light spaceship. Um, the, the next key element is on the engine side. We have to have an extremely efficient engine. The, the Raptor engine will be the highest thrust to weight engine, we believe, of having any engine of any kind ever made. We already have now 1,200 seconds of firing across 42 main engine tests. In order to land on Play on places like the moon where there is no atmosphere uh, and certainly no runways um, or to land on Mars where the atm atmosphere is too thin to land, on, even if there were runways, to land with, with a wing. Uh, you really have to get prop propulsive landing perfect. We believe the precision at this point is good enough for um, propulsive landing that we do not need legs for the next version. It will literally land with so, so much precision it will land back on its launch mounts, establishing a self-sustaining base on Mars or the Moon or elsewhere. Seriously, you need thousands, ultimately thousands of ships and tens of thousands of, of, re, of, re, of, of retanking or refilling operations, which means you need many launches per day. Fully reusable configuration, without any orbital refueling, we expect to have a payload capability of 150 tons to low Earth orbit. So, and that you know, compares to about 30 for, for um, Falcon Heavy, uh, which is partially, partially reusable. It's really quite, quite a big vehicle. Main body diameter is about, is about 9 meters or 30 feet. It's just the ba basics about the ship, 48 meter length. Uh, dry mass we're expecting to be about 85 tons. You've got the engine section in the rear, the propellant tanks in the middle, uh, and then a large payload bay in the front. That payload bay is actually eight stories tall. Uh, in fact, you can put you can fit a whole stack of Falcon 1 rockets in the payload bay. It, depending on whether you're landing or you're, coming, you're entering uh, a planet or a moon that has no atmosphere, uh, a thin atmosphere, or a dense atmosphere, and depending on whether you have, you're, you're re-entering with no, no payload in the front, a small payload, or a heavy payload, you have to balance the rocket out as it's coming in. The delta wing at the back, which, will also, which also includes a split flap or a pitch uh, and roll control allows us to control the, the pitch angle uh, a, a, a despite having a wide range of payloads in the nose and a wide range of atmospheric densities. It was necessary in order to generalize the capability of the spaceship such that it could land uh, anywhere in the solar system. The cargo area has a pressurized volume of 825 cubic meters, really is capable of carrying a, a tremendous amount of, of payload. You could conceivably have five or six people per cabin if you really wanted to crap people in, 
I think mostly we would expect to see two to three people per cabin. In the fuel tank uh, are header tanks. So when you come in for a landing, um, you, your orientation may change quite significantly, um, but you, so you can't have the propellant just slushing around all over in the main tanks. You have to have the header tanks that can uh, feed the main engines with precision. Um, so that's what you see immersed in the uh, fuel tank. The ship engine section consists of vacuum rack raptor engines and T-level engines. All six engines are capable of gimbling. The, the engines with the high expansion ratio um, have a relatively smaller gimbal area or gimbal range and a slower, and a slower gimbal rate. The center engines um, are, have a, a very high gimbal range and can gimbal uh, very quickly. Um, and you can land the ship with either one of the center engines. If one of the center engines fails at any point, it will be able to land successfully with the, with the, with the other engine. Uh, and then within each engine, there's a great deal of redundancy. We want the landing risk to be as close to zero as possible. Sea level engines are about a 330 ISP at, at uh, sea level. The, the upper stage engine uh, is 375. Now, this is version one. And then for refilling, we just saw uh, the, two, the two shifts would actually mate at the rear section. Um, they would use the same mating interface that they used to connect to the, the booster on liftoff. We'd, we'd reuse that mating interface um, and then and, and reuse the propellant fill lines that are used when the booster is, uh, when the ship is on the booster. Uh, and then to transfer propellant, it becomes very simple. Use control thrusters to accelerate in the direction um, that you want to empty. So, um, so if, if you accelerate in this direction, propellant goes that way, and you transfer the propellant very easily into the sh from, the, from the tanker to the ship. So uh, if you just fly to orbit, um, and don't do any refilling. It's it's pretty good. You'll get 150 tons to low Earth orbit, and have no and have no fuel to go anywhere else. Um, however, if you send up tankers and refill in orbit, you can refill the tanks all the way to the top. And if the tanker has high reuse capability, then you're just paying for the cost of propellant. And the cost of oxygen is extremely low, and the cost of, of, of methane is extremely low. So if that's all you're dealing with, the cost of, re of, of refilling your spaceship on orbit is, is, is tiny. Automated rendezvous and docking and refilling, absolutely fundamental. In the long term, you can use solar power to, to extract CO2 from the atmosphere, combine it with water, and produce uh, uh, fuel and oxygen for the rocket. So the same thing that we would do on Mars, uh, we could do on Earth uh, in the long term. Uh, but that, that's essentially what happens. Similar to, to, to the moon, you land, land on, on Mars, but the tricky thing with Mars is you, we do need to build a propellant depot uh, to uh, refill the tanks and return to Earth. First of all, I'd like to just express a, a great appreciation to NASA uh, for Slicing SpaceX. Uh, we appreciate the space and the SpaceX team, the Starship uh, architecture. Um, we have partnered with NASA for a long time, um, and uh, we've done uh, 20 missions to the space station, and look forward to uh, providing um, the, the capability that we've built, as well as potentially a lot more over time. Um, and uh, I think we've got potential for an incredibly exciting uh, future in space, with a uh, uh, base on the on, on uh, base on the moon and uh, ultimately uh, sending people and uh, having a, a self-sustaining city on Mars. I think that's the future, the incredibly exciting future uh, that, that's possible. And uh, the support of NASA is, is very much appreciated. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank the SpaceX team who worked incredibly hard uh, to get to this point um, and continue to do so. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, all I have to say. I think this is, this is something that, that can be incredibly inspiring uh, for, for the whole world. So uh, thank you for doing this and again, very much appreciate it. Here is my visualization for a Starship landing system, which probably be used in the upcoming lunar landing project. 